Hey, JPP told them Ravens, cut the check. But the Ravens said, no, who do you think you are? We got that plan for somebody else. And the Ravens, they are signing Brandon Copeland. And they are going to be signing him to the practice squad. But first and foremost, YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Ain't Raven here with another video. And in this video, we got a little bit to talk about. Not too much, but I hope that y'all are doing good. I hope your day is going good. It's a nice weather outside today. I love y'all. I love y'all. I got to give y'all a big real quick before we get started. There we go. I had to give y'all a big little virtual hug, man, because I really appreciate y'all and everything that y'all do uh, for a team keep it clean for each other. Uh, it's special, man. But anyway, um, it was said, uh, I believe it was Mike Preston. Uh, he said, according to sources, he said Jason Pierre-Paul wasn't even the Ravens' first option. Like, like he, he was a fallback option So they, they weren't even stunting JPP like that They were whatever about him And I, they, I guess it's true Based off of everything that happened um, But I, I wonder exactly how whatever they were about him Since they had him in twice Two times So I don't know But now with this signing It's not looking like the Jason Pierre Paul is going to happen um, so, okay, all right, and that's what we were saying in the video from earlier today, um, because we felt like, all right, if it's, if, if they're not gonna sign JPP, then you gotta move on, and you gotta bring somebody else in ASAP, because they're gonna be practicing today, um, so you want this person, if, especially if they're gonna be playing this coming, uh, Sunday against the Patriots, uh, you want this person to get ramped up, uh, with as much information as they possibly can Get acclimated to the playbook as much as they possibly can And as fast as possible uh, So they made a corresponding move uh, By saying that, signing Brandon Copeland Now, uh, Ravens, I, I guess they're they feeling like very uh, homey This, um, this offseason Because they keep bringing people that's from Baltimore to Baltimore um, I know uh, oh, Kyle Fuller Kyle Fuller He's from Baltimore. They had signed him, and I think it was somebody else, too. Was it Rally Webb or somebody? I forgot. I know it's somebody else, though. I am 1,000% sure, but I forgot exactly who it is. Um, but Brandon Copeland is also uh, from Baltimore. Uh, Jeff Zrebic pointed out that um, Copeland, he's 31 years old. All right, cool, cool, cool. Played 16 games with the Falcons last year, so I only missed one game, so that's fine. Health, not a concern, I guess. Uh, he has seven career sacks. So seven career sacks. Um, five of those seven came in 2018 when he was with the New York Jets. Uh, and that's where I remember his name from. I didn't realize he was on the Falcons last year. Because initially when I saw that they signed Brandon Copeland, I'm like, oh, we, we are. We the Baltimore Jets. We the New York Ravens. Because they signed another linebacker uh, from the Jets this offseason too. Um, but anyway, um, so what can we expect? What can we expect? I don't think the expectations are going to be any like crazy high or anything like that. But I think he is more so like, especially since he's on a practice squad. Um, with the practice squad, you have, uh, I keep forgetting whether it's two games where you can call them up to the practice squad. And if you want to call them up a third time, then you got to bring them on the active roster. Um, or is it three games? Either way. Um, the way that the practice squad works, you have at, it's at least two games. Maybe it's three, but you have at least two games where you can call them up from the practice squad on game day so they can play. But then on either the third or fourth time you want to do that, I believe it's the third time that you want to do that, uh, then after that you have to put them on the active roster. Or if you want them back on the practice squad, you have to release them and hope that they clear waivers. Uh, and then you can sign them back to the practice squad again. So you can go start the process all over again. Now, the reason that I explain that is simply because of timing. I think the signing of Brandon Copeland, it indicates that, all right, we don't want to do anything too crazy right now. We don't want to do anything too serious right now. Apparently, though, apparently, again, according to Mike Preston, he said that the Ravens, they tried to make some trades, but they just couldn't get it done. They couldn't make it happen. Who they tried to trade for? No clue. I'm sure we'll, we'll hear about it soon enough and then probably look back at it and be like, oh, man. Well, hopefully we don't, but you know how these things normally go. It usually happens every year, especially around trade deadline time. Um, this this kind of a little early for it to be happening, but we had it happen during the offseason. Oh, the Ravens tried to get this person. They almost got him, but they didn't. Anyway, y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, they uh, The timing of this, it would indicate that the Ravens are like, all right, We'll have him keep him on a practice squad. We might even call him up for the next two games. But then 
Come week five, especially against them Bengals, but come week five, uh, we should have Tyus Bowser back. So with us getting Tyus Bowser back, we'll have somebody else in the rotation. And hey, if this guy looks good enough, then we could still we could bring him up to the active roster. Now, something else to keep in mind. Now, I'm recording this at 2.01 p.m. Well, that's what time it is right now. I started recording this a couple minutes ago. Um, they're signing him to the practice squad. That, that, that means the, the active roster, it still has two open spots. So there's still some vacancies there. So the Ravens are not done making moves. They're not done. So I would expect an announcement really whenever. Like these things could pop up out of nowhere. Um, so we'll see exactly what happens uh, with that. But let's take a look at the numbers. Even though, again, Jeff Zrebic highlighted that the five of his seven career sacks, they came in 2018. Uh, so it's been a little while. But anyway, um, so he, was, uh, he started in Detroit. Uh, he was there in 2015 and 2016. Uh, and he had half a sack in 2015, didn't, have, didn't register anything in 2016. Um, then I'm not sure what happened in 2017, but he didn't record any stats. I'm not sure if he was injured. I'm not sure if he was just a free agent or what. But then 2018 with the Jets, reignited him. He got five sacks. Then 2019 uh, with the Jets, shout out to Lamar, MVP. Yeah. Um, he got one and a half sacks. And that was it. That was the last time he uh, registered a sack uh, was in 2019. Um, 2020, he spent some time with the Patriots. Uh, 2021 uh, spent time with the Falcons And with the Patriots he only played uh, in six games With the Falcons he only played in Or not only played but he played in 16 games But he only started three games uh, last year So by this move um, This just shows me that the Ravens were just They're just looking for a depth guy And, and they just wanted a depth guy real quick They just wanted somebody All right, hey, just you're on a practice squad right now. Chill here for a minute. You may get an opportunity. We'll see what other type of moves that we make. Uh, but we'll obviously keep in touch because now we're paying you. So you, you got to keep in touch with somebody that you're paying, uh, practice squad or not. So that's it. I, I Again, expectations. Um, I don't think they should be crazy high uh, as far as his opportunity. Um, now, I wonder, like, because we've been seeing Malik Harrison out there on the field. Um, but... I'm, I just I haven't been really paying attention to exactly where they've had him lined up at. Uh, if he's been lined up as an interior linebacker, or if he's been lined up at outside linebacker, I'm, I'm just I don't remember where they've had him lined up at. But we have seen that number forty on the field uh, a lot this season. Um, so yeah, uh, so man, Justin Houston and Adafi away, the boys like they they need a sponsorship. From Gatorade or maybe they need a sponsorship from uh, Rockstar Energy Drinks or something Because a Monster Energy Drinks, something Because I know they just like, oh my goodness Like, I appreciate all the playing time We love all the playing time and whatnot But we need breaks too And it's important that those guys do get breaks Because these football games are long And Ravens, hey, this new Ravens offense They scoring faster than ever They getting these big plays like, And I'm like, man, we've been missing this more, it's been consistent. I don't know. It's, it's just been two games. It's just been two games. Well, hopefully it continues. But this Ravens offense, they they've been getting these big strike plays, these these bombs and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, there we go, there we go. And you know Lamar's super happy because Lamar always wants to push that ball downfield. Always, he's always looking downfield for that nice chunk play. He's been like that for the longest, and now. Uh, he's getting it on a consistent basis early on in the season. And this is good because it's early on in the season. And the, the more you're doing it now, the more comfortable people will be doing it as, as the season goes along. And that's something that I talked about in the offseason, especially with putting emphasis on the passing game. Because I felt like, hey, we, knew, we know the Ravens are going to be able to run the ball, even though they haven't been able to run the ball. Um, but I just wanted it to be one of those situations where come late in the season, come playoff times and whatnot, all right, I expect the Ravens to be a predominantly run run first team or whatnot. Um, but I didn't want, when it's time to pass heavy, I didn't want everybody to be looking around like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa what, what do we do now? How do we do this? But they, they getting it in early and often, and I love it. They got to fix some things here and there with the running game, the run blocking on the offensive line and all that, and obviously with the pass rush. So that brings us back to them making a signing like this and – 
whoever else they may be bringing in. Because, again, two roster spots are still open, so two moves are still to be made. But anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. appreciate y'all. Uh, thank you for everything. Uh, and tell somebody today, thank you. Whoever, not, not me. You know how to tell me. Um, but I'm thanking y'all. Y'all, th thank somebody else. You can send them a little text. Uh, tell them in person. In person would be the best way because they'll really appreciate that. But they'll appreciate it either way. Uh, tell them that thank you and tell them you appreciate whatever it is that they do uh, for you or anything that they've done for you uh, in the past. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. We out.